So I got a text from my friend the other day with a rugby ball emoji and it got me thinking, does any other sport other than rugby have this? Like where people's perception of the ball is like from 30 to 40 years ago? Seriously, why do most people think rugby balls still have laces? Probably American football and Aussie rules have helped this misconception, but just take a look at the following emojis for rugby balls. All of them are in the old fashioned brown color with laces except for Twitter. Yeah, the person who made that Twitter emoji was a rugby fan for sure who knew what was up. And it's not just limited to emojis either. Rugby people are guilty of this as well. Just take a look at the logos for MLR's Rugby New York or the Super Rugby logo and the new South Waratahs logo. Laces. All of them. So my questions are, why don't rugby balls have laces? And when did rugby balls get rid of the laces? And also, I'm just interested in the history of these changes because that's what this channel is all about. So let's get into it. Actually, before we do, thank you for watching this video and just make sure to like the video and subscribe and blah, 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 all that stuff. Back in the 1800s, rugby balls were stitched by hand with leather and casings and pig splatters. It wasn't until 1892 when the International Rugby Board made ovalness of the rugby ball mandatory. Rugby League tested a round ball in some trial games after the split of 1895, but also opted to stick with an oval shaped ball. Still, many countries had their own interpretations of what a rugby ball should be. For example, South Africa preferred an eight panel rugby ball. Australia, New Zealand preferred a more pointed or torpedo shaped ball. In Europe, they preferred either a four or six panel ball. You can see in this Gilbert catalog that these ball preferences were still holding strong by the 1950s. Synthetic rugby balls were introduced sometime in the early 70s. During the 70s and 80s, leather and synthetic were both used until sometime in the early 90s when synthetic balls began to be used exclusively. It wasn't a specific date is what I'm saying, it was a slow evolution. In the New South Wales Rugby League, synthetic balls were in use in the 80s but both teams had to agree on the use of a synthetic ball. Otherwise, a leather ball would be used. This caused a lot of arguments as certain teams got used to a specific ball, and by 1990, the synthetic ball was mandated for the entire competition. 1987 was the first time that a traditional leather ball wasn't used for the Five Nations tournament. Again, countries had individual preferences. Wales used the meter multiplex balls that were synthetic, while France used the Adidas synthetic. England, Scotland, and Ireland switched to the Gilbert Barbarian ball, which was leather but had a rougher feel to it. Essentially, it was a compromise between the two types of balls. The Rugby World Cups of 1987 and 1991 helped standardize the rugby ball that we have now, laceless and synthetic. The World Cup organizers requested that Meter in 87 and Adidas in 91 make only synthetic balls for the tournaments. This decision did not come easily though as many rugby players did not like the change away from leather for a variety of reasons. New Zealand kicker Grant Fox complained specifically of the Adidas synthetic during the 91 World Cup, stating that the ball floated, dropped, and veered away like a deflating balloon at the most unexpected moments. France's Didier Camberabero remarked that the synthetic ball was a mixture between soap and a balloon. It slips between your fingers when you try to pass, and it flies like a loose rocket when you try to kick it. Even though some players didn't like the change, the synthetic balls had more clear advantages. Leather was a difficult material to use as it became easily waterlogged and more difficult to kick. The synthetic balls were much more consistent regardless of weather and usage as noted by Dusty Hare, a goal kicking legend for England in the 70s. This is what he said. Rugby ball manufacture has been improving over the years and while I was kicking a leather ball, the current players have a plastic coated version which means you get a very standard type of ball. The leather one used to get heavy when wet and you would often line it up for a kick and see the seams were not straight on the ball because of the stretching. I think I would have enjoyed kicking with the current ball and conditions. So yeah, a video about rugby laces has turned into a video about the change from leather to synthetic materials. But that explains why rugby balls don't have laces anymore. 
because of the switch to synthetic. As an American though, I take pride in seeing the clear rugby roots that an American football shares with a rugby ball. Most gridiron footballs to this day are made of leather and still maintain the old fashioned brown color. You can buy a leather ball with laces from Gilbert or Steeden online, and the old-fashioned replicas no doubt make a great centerpiece for any room with rugby memorabilia. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and thank you so much. Please remember to like and subscribe. See ya.